ओके सो लास्ट क्लास वी हैव कंप्लीटेड टिल इंडेक्स मैच फंक्शन आई हैव गिवन यू अ होमवर्क हैव यू ऑल कंप्लीटेड द होमवर्क सो आई आज यू ऑल टू फाइंड द सप्लायर्स नेम यूजिंग दिस टेबल anyone who has done it just raise your hand anyone who has done it just raise your hand no one no one has done it okay so i'll do one thing i'll give you all some more time tomorrow again we'll have a class so just complete this assignment by tomorrow okay all right so now let's move to the some other very important functions so these are functions which you might not be using uh, separately but you will require these functions to be used uh, within a some somewhere between a function so these functions you can say that these functions are not very important but yet very important to complete certain solutions right so these are very that is why we call it as other functions because these are the functions you might not directly always like we look up if function index match these are the functions that we use separately right but these functions what we are going going to do right now these are the functions that we are not going to use directly might be using it within some other functions right so it's very important in cm1 also uh, functions like mod uh absolute integer and round these are four five basic functions that we use a lot in cm1 right all right and moving ahead also you will be using these functions a lot okay so the very first thing so the very first thing is the mod function so what is mod function for example i want to divide 10 by 2 what is the remainder 0 if i divide 11 by 2 one so we get the remainder using the mod function see when you write mod it returns the remainder after a number is divided by a divisor right so we open the bracket the first number is the number which you want to divide so basically i want to divide 10 by 2 divisor is the number which using which you want to divide your 10 so i'll close my bracket hit enter and what what is the answer that you're getting you're getting zero now obviously you will not use this function separately anywhere you might use this function for example there is a group of cash flow which is happening and the cash flow is only happening in the uh, let's say suppose every 12th month so the cash flow is happening every 12th month so you will divide maybe to, uh, a number with 12 so if the answer is 1 if the answer is 0 if the answer is 0 which means 12 24 32 and so on so in those places only we'll have the cash flow so we can use this mod function within a if function so when we'll practice moving ahead we'll be using this function for you know uh, when we have different kinds of cash flows maybe quarterly maybe monthly then we use these functions similarly if i write mod 11 comma 2 what is the answer answer that i should get one okay similarly if you divide 11 by 4 what is the answer that you'll get 3 right remainder is 3 okay if you all have any questions in between you all can just use the chat box chat box or maybe unmute yourself i want all of you all to please switch on your cameras varuni abhishek khushi gorav arushi please switch on your cameras it's easy for me to teach right okay okay so the next uh, function that we have is pi so what is pi is this a function 3.14 the entire value of pi when you in your calculator when you just use that pi symbol in a scientific calculator you get the answer right so this is not a function as such if you want to have the value of pi you can just write equal to pi and within this there is no argument what argument can you put in a pi right it's not a function it's just a value it is stored in the function pi so what do we do we just write pi we just write pi and we close and open the bracket if you open the bracket there is no argument that you can mention there is no argument that you can mention so just simply close the bracket hit enter 
I will just zoom into the screen. I think now it's fine. So you all can increase the decimal places as well. You all can increase the decimal for pi. You can decrease the decimals, right? Right? Pi. The next function that we have is absolute. For example, sometimes what we need is just the absolute value, not the plus minus all these things we don't need. We just need the absolute value. So we're just bothered about the absolute value. We don't want the negative part. We just bother if it's if it is minus two, I just want two. What is the amount? What is the absolute figure? I don't want the sign plus minus. So what do we use? We use absolute. And what do we write? You just give a number. Either it can be a number, for example, I'm writing minus 7 or you can select a cell which contains minus 7 or any number, right? So you get 7. You can select any particular cell. For example, here we have minus 1000.67. So I will just select this particular cell, close the bracket and you get the answer as 100.67 right absolute again something which is not directly used but sometimes it will be used within a few functions right absolute all right so the next thing next function again very important function is the integer function so what integer function will do is that many times we don't need the decimal places for example the value is 106.7 something like that we don't want the decimal we are just bothered about the integer part for example uh, let me just give you a small hint as to where we use this for example we have the cash flows monthly we have the time as month so 1 by 12 1 by 12 I don't want to change this into a date so I will keep it as number 0 0.08 then we have this thing plus 1 by 12 so basically it's increasing monthly these are the months. This is first month, second month and I'm working in years. 1 by 12, 2 by 12, 3 by 12, 4 by 12, 5 by 12, by 12 and so on. Alright, so I'm working in years and these are the months given to me. If I just drag this down, we'll have it till 1. So how many, how many values are there? There are, see, there are, if you see the count over here, it's 12. Right, so there are 12 values. There are 12 values values so basically for example the cash flow will only happen at time one so we are just bothered that it should be a complete integer not in absolute so we can use integer function it's just a hint as to when we use integer function we use integer function not a lot but many times within these if function we look up functions and so on right so we will just write we will just write integer. You can select a number if you want. So I'll select this minus 100.67. What is the answer that we should get? It will remove all the decimal places. So what is the answer that we should get? Minus 100. Just minus 100. Just minus 100. And see what it has done. It has rounded up the number. Because if it is 0 0.5 or greater than 0 0.5, the number gets rounded up to the next integer to the next integer if the number is c if the number is mm, integer we can say 3.45 it will become 3 if it was 3.6 it will become 4 right so that is what an integer function does for you right again very important then we have exponential not so much used but again exponential is something e to the power if you want e to the power 6 then we can use exponential function exponential e to the power 2 if you just check your calculators e to the power 2 will give you 7.389 right exponential function e to the power anything then we have log function again we have two functions log and ln so basically when you use log function there is a base log a b a is the base log e 10 it's called the natural log when you have base e when you have log 10 it's basically log 10 10 will give you answer 1 basically you can decide your own base right generally we use natural log which is base e right so for that we have ln function so i'll show you first let's do with the log function so it returns the logarithm of a number and the base is what you specify right so for example my number is 10 and the base 
which I want to give log 10 base 10. So if suppose I want to give the base 10, the answer will be obviously 1 log 10 base 10. Answer is 1. Now suppose I don't want to specify the base again and again, but what I want is a natural log. Right? What I want is a natural log, so I can straight away use a function called ln. This returns the natural logarithm of a number. You don't have to specify the base exponential again and again. So for example, here I am doing um, ln 2, I will get the answer of 0 0.69. So this is basically log 2 base e. Right? Log 2 base e. For example, just a quick thing. For example, here I am writing exponential 1. So what I am doing within the log, within the ln function, so this is ln e base is e, right? So I am getting an answer of 1. Just to play around with the function, ln exponential 1, this means e to the power 1, which is e. So ln e, ln e means base is E. So answer will be 1. Log A A is always 1. This is just a property of log, right? If you haven't done log, then you can just go through. There are 4-5 basic properties of log. Log A B is log A plus log B. Log A by B is log A minus log B. Just a few basic properties of log, right? So we generally use ln. Why do we use ln? Because generally we use natural logarithm. Base E. This one this one. This is simply your log function. You don't have to mention the base. The base is by default taken as e. Right? What do you see in your uh, calculators is ln. Right? There are two functions, log and ln. We always use ln because we want base e. Right? Alright. <clears throat> okay. Next, we have round function. Again, something which is very favorite for all the people who are in finance because we obviously we always have to round the numbers we don't use the full full numbers always so this is very nice and interest uh, good function which is made over here so we give the number and we also give the number of digits that you want so basically let me just take one single number over here for convenience i'll take 100.7 uh, or maybe 4.5324 whatever okay i've taken maybe i've taken this number with five decimal places now suppose i want to round this number to two decimal places so what should be the answer 100.45 right two decimal places for a job let me do one thing here let me keep this as here let me keep this as five now now uh now if i just take round and i round this to three decimal places what will be the answer wait varuni answer Answer the question. You all can use what for hundred point four five four point hundred point four five four. Okay, you can mute yourself. All right. So till three decimal places because the moment the number is the next number is five, you will just increase it by one. So. If I say you to round it off to one decimal, then it will be 100.5, right? It's a very general thing that we follow. So now I select this number. How many number of digits do I want? I want three decimal places. So I get 100 point. You just give the number first and then the number of digits that you want after the decimal point. All right. This is round function. Hundred point one two three five. It should take that. All right. So then we have round up. So what round up does is that it will round up to the next. It basically rounds to the next, towards the next integer. 
it rounds to the next integer so basically let me take a new number over here for example my number is okay let me change this number only for you all so let me keep it as 3 4 2 so this number is now just see using the round function the answer is 100.453 right 453 now if I use a round up function if I use round up function and I round up this number and the number of places digits which I want is 3 for example so see what my answer will be my answer is 100.454 so basically it will round up to the towards the next integer so the next integer is 101 it will round towards the next integer so this has to be 453 but it will round up to 454 now for example again it's a twist over here it's not a twist it's just a you know let's play with the function again so if we have 100.43 just uh, just look at the board if we have 45352 using the round function my answer should be 454 four, right and using the round up it should be 454 four. it will not become 455 five right so that is the twist that we have over here so basically what happens is that so basically what happens in roundup is that if you want to if suppose again if this is 4 2 right so if this is getting rounded up so suppose if it is getting 100.453 then there is a possibility of rounding up by uh, 2 4 so it will become 100.454 right but if the answer is naturally coming as 100.454 then it will not again round up to one more decimal that's not possible right so that is round up and similarly I have understood round down right so in this case what happens it rounds down to the lowest to the lowest integer which you have so round down is basically rounds a number down towards zero right so I will use round down and this is my number for example I want to round maybe now let's take two um, three decimals again let me take it till three decimals again so the number should be what four five three right three decimal four five three the answer will also be four five three but if I again change this number if I again change this number to four five three five now see the change this will become this will this should be what four five four but it will be four five three so this round function is the normal rounding that we do round up is basically if there is a possibility of rounding up then it will definitely round up the number round down is if there is a possibility of rounding down for example here we have four five three five so there is a possible so the answer will be 454 but this will keep it as 453 in case of round up if it is 4534 over here let me just write it down for you all 534 do not get confused it's very simple nothing is there C9 C. So here in case of and similarly let me copy paste it over here. So in case of this number 453 453 this is getting rounded up to 454. The answer should have been 453 but it is getting rounded up to 454. Similarly here the answer should be 454 but the answer is 453 because we are using round down right okay next two functions very simple very basic is floor and ceiling so this is basically again it rounds so floor function what it does is that, is that it rounds a number down to the nearest multiple of significance basically what it will do is that suppose if I want a number if I'm writing a number as 167 and you will hear these things a lot that write up to two significance figures, three significant figures, three SF, 
three significant figures. SF is the short form for significant figures. You will hear this a lot, right? When we are working with numbers a lot in accounts and finance, wherever you go, it's something which is mentioned always is three significant, three SF, significant figures, four SF, four significant figures. So that is used, that is calculated using floor and ceiling. So for example, here I'm writing 167.67. And I want the number to be up till three significant figures. So I will just write three. Close the bracket and see what happens. The answer is 165. What was my number? 167.67. This was my number. But I want it up, up till three significant figures. So my number is 167.67. Three significant figures is 167. But it will round down to the nearest integer. 165 so that be it becomes a multiple see what floor function does is that what floor functions does is that it rounds a number down to the nearest multiple of significance nearest multiple of significance what is the multiple of significance over here three what is the multiple of significance three so it will round down to 165 which is the multiple of three Right, 165 is a multiple of 3. Right, now similarly, for example, I want this number to be rounded down to 2 significant figures. Then you will get the answer as 166. Multiple of the number, the significance number. Right, for example, generally we always keep it as 10 significance. 100 significance. So if I just keep it as 10, then the answer will be 160. Right? And for example, here we use ceiling. Similarly, we use ceiling function. Now in the ceiling function, I'm using this and I'm giving the significance as 10. So it should be multiple of 10, but it is ceiling. So it will round up to the next integer, which is a multiple of 10. So it will be 170. Very good. Again, you will get used to these functions as and when you use it in future. This is just an introduction to the function, right? When you use it in your sums, when you use it in your life, then you will get more habituated with these functions, right? Okay. All right. So these were some basic functions, a little boring, but very important, right? Now let's move to the next part. I hope you'll have downloaded this file. Right? Okay. So now the next function that we'll start again, an important function is the frequency function. So all of you in class 12, if you have math, you have created frequency tables. X, FX, remember? You have created frequency tables. Now we'll do that just using one function. We don't have to do so much of counting and everything. We just use frequency function and we have the number. So here what I've taken is that we have a data. Let's just get introduced with the data. I hope you all have, we've used this data, right? In previous classes. I don't think so. Wait, so we have different countries. I have 195 countries over here, right? We have the country code of these countries. These country codes are of three letters each. Let me just zoom in. Then we have the birth rate. Then we have the birth rate of all the countries out of 100. Then we have the internet users. It's in the form of a percentage out of 100 again. And then we have the income group. High income, low income, upper middle, lower middle. So these are the four income categories of these different countries that we have. You can search for India also. We have India also here. For searching anything in Excel, just use the shortcut control F. Control F and you can search for India and you can search for India. See, we have India, we have India, IND. This is 
actually this is uh, a data which i've taken it's of very it's an it's an very old data so that is why it shows lower middle income now it has actually increased and this is the internet usage 15.1 which is again increased by a lot obviously and 20.29 is the birth rate which has again increased right so this is a old data which i have taken over here right so control f is the function to find for anything in your excel file or even in the word file okay so now this is the data which is given to us now what i want is that out of these 195 total countries which i have i want to know what is the frequency distribution of this entire table what is the frequency distribution of this entire table so basically what i want how many countries are below zero which is obviously not possible you cannot have birth rate in negative figures right then i want how many countries are there which are between zero and five five and ten ten and fifteen and so on so this is the frequency table which i want to create understood what i what i want i want to group my numbers into these buckets what are these buckets 0 to 5 5 to 10 10 to 5 and 15 and so on these are the birth rates and i want to see what is the distribution of these birth rates right correct correct so all of you all now understand what do i actually want now let's use the function first i will suggest is just see what i'm doing on the screen and then try it because i've seen a lot of students they know this function but they're not able to use it because of one small thing just see on the board this is a little different from what we have done in past so what do we do over here is that firstly we select the entire uh, column where we want the output we select the entire column first see and then do first see and then do okay so i selected the entire column i want my output over here then in the formula bar i will type my function as frequency i have typed my function then we want the data array this is the array which contains all the data so where is my data my data is over here my data is over here control shift down i will select the entire column right comma then we want the bins array what is the bins array the buckets the x column this is the x column the buckets so this is my bins array one thing which you also have to do is to make it absolute f and f4 right it's same it's same now it's same for all the numbers over here so now what we'll do is close the bracket don't hit enter don't hit enter wait just wait for one second so what i've done i've selected this entire group of cells where i want my output then click on the frequent uh, formula bar type the frequency function this is the data array make sure you keep it as absolute and this is the birth rate even if you don't keep it as absolute there is no problem we will still get the answer and then this is the bins array now instead of entering now instead of pressing enter you will have to hit control shift enter control shift enter and you will get your answer why why are we doing this because frequency function is a matrix function it applies to a group of cells any function that applies to the entire group of cells is known as a matrix function right now here what do we have we have these curly brackets you all notice we have this curly brackets right this is something which has been used for all the matrix functions now just wait wait a second now if even if i try to just delete any one of the cells now this will show me an error see i cannot do i cannot i cannot just simply delete any value so i'll have to click on escape even if you by mistake for example try to you know just press backspace you will not able to hit enter or maybe move outside of the cell so click on escape just try it on all of you and one more last thing all of these numbers should add up to 195 we have 195 countries so we can use the sum function or we have learnt one shortcut alt equal to alt equal to 195 just write all of you so firstly the first step is to select 
these cells take your cursor to the formula bar type the frequency function select the data array select the data array select the bins array and click on control shift enter clear all tick f and f4 just, or maybe just f4 depends on your laptop so now what do we can so now what do we say most of the countries are within the bracket 10 to 15 where the birth rate is between 10 to 15 most of the countries lie within this bracket 51 countries lie within this bracket there are no countries with birth rate 0 to 5 right done done all of you done? Just write a yes in the chat box. Good. Okay. Now the next thing that we'll do is the offset function. This is done? This is done? Okay, now we'll do the offset function. So what is offset function? Again, um, you can say that this function is again not used a lot, but it's again a very important function that we all should know. Now what is offset function? So basically, for example, over here, what do we want is to extract the country name of all the 10th country, basically 10th, 20th, 30th. 40th country. I in my entire data I want what is the 10th country, what is the 20th country, what is the 40, uh, 30th country and so on. So we can do this using offset function. So how do we do just see it's very simple again we write offset close the uh, open the bracket first is the reference this reference is the starting point. This, this reference is the starting point. So you can give this as your starting point. And make sure your starting point is always absolute. So keep this in absolute. Use the shortcut F4. Right? So we keep this as absolute. This is my reference or the starting point. Now we tell Excel how many rows we have to go down how many rows we have to go down so we go want to go down 10 rows down so I select this cell 10 I select this cell 10 I want to go 10 rows down right I want to go 10 rows downwards right 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 how many columns do you want to go right zero because I want because I want the answer from this column only how many columns do you want to go right zero because I want the answer from the same column, right? So I will write 0. And then the height and the width is not important for us right now. You can just simply close the bracket. Again, one more thing you can keep in mind is that these numbers, number of rows and number of columns can also be negative. If it's negative, suppose the number of column is negative, then you can go leftwards. Suppose it is minus 1. So you will go one column to the left. And if the row number is negative, you will go one row upwards just the opposite right right if it's positive down and right if it's negative left and up right okay so we first give the starting point and then the number of rows that we want to go down number of columns so we have Austria 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 
10 we have Austria so many a times what do we want is that um, generally again suppose you're working in years uh, working in months the cash flows are happening in months first month second month I want all the values of the year I want all the year-end values so I want the 12th 24th 32nd value all these values right so we will use offset function there it's not used a lot but it is you and this is a function which is very very helpful in such situations when suppose they ask to plot a chart just to show the year-end values but you have done the calculation on the basis of month months you have monthly cash flows then uh, you'll have to use if function all these functions instead of using if function and all you can simply use the offset function otherwise you'll have to use if uh, integer all these functions together to get the 12th 24th 32nd value instead of that you can use offset function so it's used not a lot not very much but it's very helpful in these cases right and you have many such situations so I have not taught you all about the height and the width part so here because it's again not required but height and width we also use this when we want a group of cells together we want, want to extract a range of cells then we also specify the height the number of rows that we want and then width is the number of columns that we want so suppose I want this entire thing I want this entire thing so I will mention height as maybe 2 and width as 2 so I will get these 4 cells not required alright so what I will do next if I, is, is that I will just drag this uh, cell down A1 will remain absolute what will change is this number 10, 20, 30 so we will get the 10th, 20th rows and so on so I will just drag this down and we have these numbers so this is Austria then we have this Bosnia and so on right offset function once you do it please mention a yes in the chat box or just show me a thumbs up great done offset function very simple yet I have seen a lot of students what they do is they forget about this function and when we have these certain problems just extract the year and cash flows and they are then stuck into if index match all these functions which are not required you can straight away use the offset function yes Maroof Sorry, highlight. For that, you'll have to use macros VBA. Okay. Not everything that is the reason we learn macros and VBA, right? Okay. Okay. So, uh, we have done this, right? So next function or next feature that we, so it's clear till here, offset um, frequency function, clear. Now we'll move to something which is very important. It's a favorite feature of all the people who, who are into finance and uh, we will meet this feature a lot in future. So basically I've taken a very, very, very simple illustration for you all. So I have my income over here, suppose 1 lakh right you all can write any income your pocket money and then what are your spendings so suppose I have given my expenses as housing food clothing healthcare, transportation and others you all can mention movies dates cafes so all you can mention these as well right and then we have the final savings so savings amount is very very high obviously <laughs> you cannot save 50 more than 50 percent of your income unless it's very huge so here we have savings and we have one lakh I've taken minus sum of all the expenses right so this is my savings my goal is to make this savings as 55,000 this is my target 
this is my target savings this is my target savings what is my target saving 55000 this is what i dream my savings to be i cannot change my income i cannot change housing food clothing healthcare transportation the only thing i can change is others right i cannot change my income so i can only change others and what do i want my final answer should be 55000 the savings should be 55000 now what and how we do this using goal seek function right it's a very 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 basic illustration which i have taken you all can just mentally calculate you all can do it but many a times in fact almost all the times we cannot do the calculations mentally because we have very huge calculations right so here the goal seek the seek the goal is to make this as 55000 by changing others theek okay? hai so we'll go to the data section Here we have what if analysis. Here we have what if analysis. Click on what if analysis. Goal seek. Set cell. This set cell is the output or the target cell. This is my output. Forty fifty four thousand one hundred. This is my output. This is my actual output, right? Savings. I've got my savings using income and expenses. I've got my savings using income and expenses. So this is my outcome. Output cell. So set cell the output cell to value fifty five thousand. Now here here if you see in the to value you cannot select a cell. You have to manually type the number which is fifty five thousand. You cannot select a cell. You have to manually type in the number fifty five thousand. Right? Then we have by changing which cell do you want to change to get this fifty five thousand? I want to change the others. cell right set cell is the output cell which is 54100 i want to change this to 55000 by changing input you have to change an input to get the final output which you want your desired output now i'll just click on okay and see it has done the calculations for us goal seek with cell b11 found a solution target value 50000 current value 55 Thousand, okay, and this is the final answer that you have calculated using goal seek. So whenever you use goal seek, it's always important that you give this small note. So we've written set cell, output cell. What is the output cell? B eleven to value fifty five thousand by changing any of the input cell. Now, one more thing. This is very important because I've seen many students making a mistake over here. Just see, this is fifty-five thousand. How have I calculated fifty-five thousand? One lakh minus these values. Now, for example, I don't calculate this like this. I just use one lakh minus sum of. Just see what I'm doing. All these numbers. I'm not taking others cell over here. And minus, I'm manually writing maybe whatever the number was, forty-one hundred, right? This is maybe forty-one hundred. So what I have done is, I've taken one lakh minus some of these minus forty-one hundred, right? Right? I'm getting the answer as fifty-four five hundred. Now again, just try to perform goal seek, setting this cell to fifty-five thousand. by changing others by changing others click on okay you will never get a value you will never get a value by why why are we not getting the value what is the difference because we have not because we haven't used this cell in the output cell right so how will excel recognize that you have used this cell in your output you will have to use that input cell within your output cell that is the only way you can change the input that is the only way it becomes an input cell this 4100 is an input right 
but this is not the input cell that we have taken into consideration so how will excel change and this is one of the most common issues i've seen students making a mistake over here they don't get the answer for goal seek because they haven't used that input in the output if you are not using that cell in your output cell then how will you even how will excel consider it to be an input 4100 can be from anywhere here also we can write 4100 it can be from anywhere so if you're not using this cell if you're not using this cell how can this be considered as an input cell right right this is a very common mistake which is made by all the students now we can again perform the goal seek and this will change 55000 4100 right you'll have to use the input cell to get the output now when you'll move ahead we'll have inter lots of intermediate calculations so in the final output cell you might not use the input directly but somewhere or the other in your calculations you've used the input cell which leads to the output cell so this might not be directly used for example for example i'll show you all let me insert one uh, column and here i can just write total total expenses right this is total <clears throat> expenses sum of all these numbers this is my total expenses this is let me keep it as um, this is my income in green so this is my income this is my expenses here in my savings i'm just writing income minus expenses right 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 here i'll again change this to 4000 so now in this cell i've used the income and the expenses i haven't used the others cell but i've used the other cells to calculate expenses somewhere or the other in my entire calculation which leads me to savings have i have used this others cell right so now you can also perform the goal seek again so this is one very simple yet something which i have seen over the years that students make a mistake and they even cannot recognize what mistake they have made such basic thing but generally we make mistake over here now it's fine right great okay so this is goal seek feature very very important trust me very powerful feature anywhere you go anywhere you will use this function you will use this feature and still you all not believe there are many students even there are some working professionals who are not able to use this function correctly it's a very basic function yet i have seen some professionals who are working even they are not able to use this feature right goal seek okay so we'll do it till here today we'll just have one more class for basics and you all can see what all we are left with so we'll be completing these different things in the next class and then we'll finish it up all right make sure i will also give you an practice spreadsheet after the next class but make sure you all complete that um, index match thing okay any questions ma'am can you share the entire all right i hope you have understood at least gorav data tab what if goal seek so this is the goal seek set cell this is the cell that you have to change to value uh, 55000 by changing we have already done so we'll not nothing will change now others and okay got if you understood right okay okay so this is still here now in the next class we'll be next class will be very much simple uh we'll be doing some basic text and date functions we'll be learning sorting filtering conditional formatting and graphs we'll be creating some amazing looking graphs all right any questions any questions you'll have 
no no okay 